trying to cast directly into the earth. It's not how you normally cast with bronze. You normally would cast in a foundry in sand, which has been dried with a blowtorch. Obviously we're out here and we're doing it directly into the earth, so we're not really quite sure what's going to happen, what we will get at the end of it. But whatever comes out today, we will make the sculpture from it, even if it's in pieces or um, if we're lucky enough to get a continuous run. really did spit, didn't you? I'm so sorry. Well, it's much more exciting than going to a foundry. <laughs> I think it should look quite nice. We wanted to commission a female artist because in this centenary of female suffrage, we're putting a real focus and an emphasis on the relationship of women and the Foundling Hospital and our collection and the 300 year story. As an artist and a mother, I found it a very challenging and emotional space to make work for. I'm very interested in ideas surrounding memory, the passing of time, and the shadowy boundary between forgetting and remembering. All the exhibitions that we stage here at the museum are really prisms through which to see the story and the stories that we tell. I visited the museum and I was immediately drawn to the textile tokens left by the mothers as a means to identify their child. The vast majority of these tokens were scraps of fabric pinned to the registration documents. The Founding Archive has about 5,000 beautiful, mundane and moving scraps of fabric. When you see how an illiterate woman has crudely sewn an initials or a birthplace or a symbol onto such a tiny piece of fabric, and it's all that remains between them and the child that they've given up, I just found that so powerful that I knew that was my starting point. Uh, I wanted to use a vast array of different fabrics, similar to the textile collection in the Foundling Archive. So I've sourced new fabrics, old fabrics, second-hand clothing. I wanted to make work that was about the absence of the mothers in the hospital, in the story of the hospital and in the museum and by using the ceramic uh, allowed me to make a cast where the fabric disappeared. I'm just painting roughly cut swatches of fabric with earthenware. These pieces are quite nice because they will really curl and peel, which I hope will add a nice movement to the piece when it's installed. I never intended to make a kiln for the project. We did negotiate using somebody else's kiln, but unfortunately they let us down. So we thought how hard could building a wood burning kiln actually be? We bought a book and it turned out it's very hard to build a wood burning kiln. <laughs> All of the work was very physical through the winter months in snow and rain and wind. It has been a very steep learning curve to build your own and fire it with no experience. The fabric burns away in the kiln, which stands for the absence of the mother, leaving only a trace of its weave and pattern in the final cast.
these ones were quite a lacy fabric, whereas this was more of a fleecy, fleecy one. We're aiming to make approximately 5,000 ceramic fragments, which is similar in number to the number of textile tokens that the founding. This vast ceramic outpouring is an analogy for the intensity of emotion in each and every story told by the founding museum. Jodie's commission is an artist responding to the key ideas that sit at the heart of our story. The relationship between mothers and their children, the relationship between society and the children that we have been given responsibility to care for, and those bonds of love and responsibility, how strong they are, and yet at some, in some ways how fragile they are. Cord is a bronze cast of rope that has been buried in the earth. Cord connects floor to ceiling and references the bomb not only between mother and child but also founding and institution. If I had just cast rope in sand, I would have got a direct copy of the rope. But because I have cast it directly in earth, I have all this overspill where the soil has dried on contact with the molten bronze and then creating these like arteries and veins off the original rope. I had been introduced to Jodie's work and I was really struck straight away by this combination of detail and often great delicacy and fragility but on a really monumental scale, very powerful works that really held space. Found are 18 plaster sculptures that were cast from rolls of fabric buried in the ground and excavated to form a rudimentary mould. By choosing to cast directly in the earth, the poor plaster takes on all the traces of stones, soil, plant roots absorbed in the process. I used to dry plaster in the studio. However, plaster sculptures dry much, much better outside. So we built huts that resembled wood stores so the sculptures had a number of months to dry outside in their huts. When you make, is it all in your head? Do you draw anything or do you...? No, it's just all in my yeah. head. <laughs> it's really nice to make stuff because things develop through making. Every single one is completely different, just how the fabric slumps as it goes into the soil, how you pull it out, how wet the soil was. You would never have been able to foresee that on paper. When you showed me around the space, I immediately visualised some really rough plaster sculptures standing in the actual museum. Their vertical stance suggestive of sentinels, protective upright forms. They're memorials of their own making, and much like archaeological objects, once buried, now found. Once the sculptures are installed in the gallery, I make marks on their surface using paints, colouring pencils and chalks. Flecks of delicate pastel colours suggestive of the different ways light falls on them. 
and it helps to highlight the sculpture's textures and surface and really encourage the viewer to look closer at the detail in each cast. But there's also something about the artist's touch and the universal human urge to make an impression on our surroundings. The overriding idea behind all the works on exhibition is one of emotion. The Fowley Museum is home to so many amazing stories. Stories of heartbreak, hope, resilience. The works I've made are testimony to maternal love, loss and separation. <laughs>